So hello, we're here live with Inma Andres from Sunshine and Glow. Um, and Inma is a client of One Line Studio and today she's going to be talking to us about her experience creating a brand with One Line Studio. And we're going to focus a little bit on brand personas um, and how that was a beneficial part of the overall process. Um, so just to give you all a bit of a background um, on what a brand persona is, um, basically a brand persona provides the link between motivation and action. Um, in order to create a brand persona, it gives your audience and your customers something uh, that they can relate to. Uh, we use the personas to build the look and feel of the brand. Um, and the reason we do it is because thinking about um, Thinking about the brand as a persona, it gives a certain aesthetic. Um, a persona will have a certain aesthetic, a certain tone of voice, a way of writing. And so that provides the designers with a 360 degree uh, complete personality, if you like, um, which really humanizes the brand. Um, the process is a lot like creating a character. So we think about um, fun things, you know, what would the persona wear? What might their favorite film be? Um, and what type of body language they might have? Um, it's a very, it's a vital st step um, in order to connect the audience um, on a human level. Um, and obviously once you get all those elements of a persona on paper, it uh, really helps you to teach other people about your brand, whether it be that colleagues and staff, or even you, yourself. And it helps you to be able to communicate on behalf of your brand. Um, so where do we begin? Well, usually we begin by asking lots and lots of questions of our clients, which um, in my will, I'm sure testify to um, but the reason we do that is because obviously you know as a client out there you know you know the brand better than what we do at, at the start um, and so we just ask lots and lots of questions to try and discover who the brand really is um, and what sort of consistent threads we can we can bring out um, in order to then transform that into visuals so in my like I said is is one of the clients who's been through this um, grueling process with us <laughs> Um, and um, she's going to talk to us today uh, about it all. So first of all, I'd, I'd like to introduce you to Inma, and she's going to tell us a bit about um, her organisation, Sunshine and Glow. Hi, Helen. So nice to join you today. Um, my name is Inma. I started a blog called Sunshine and Glow um, two years ago, in India, so in December 2014. And... I, um, I actually I studied journalism in Spain where I'm from but then when I moved to the UK my career kind of took a different path um, and while I was working I always really enjoyed working with creatives um, and so there was that Christmas I thought you know what I'm going to be brave and I'm going to create a blog and kind of explore that side of me um, and I started blogging about things that I really love and at first I didn't tell anyone um, I was really embarrassed and then a couple of months later I remember thinking right okay I'm going to pluck up the courage I'm going to put a post on Facebook and tell all my friends about it and the minute I did I started getting some really nice feedback from friends and colleagues who had seen it and it really um, encouraged me to keep going and to um, keep sharing and then I connected with some amazing people over the past two years so I was at a point last summer that I thought I wanted to make some changes. And um, but what Sunshine and Glow is all about is about living a healthier, happier, and more fulfilling life, whatever that means to you. So I personally I love all that health and fitness movement online, but I always find that the women, especially women who are doing it really well, they have lifestyles that I it's just not mine. I don't have the yeah. money or the time to do like one on one yoga classes at lunchtime, or I don't fancy eating really clean the whole of the time because I like to enjoy that like, wine with my friends. And I thought there must be loads of people like me out there who like to be happier and like to have a kind of um, make some changes and and they don't know where to start because it all feels like you either do everything or you do nothing and for me health is super important really really important both physically and mentally um I've had some 
very challenging times over the past few years. Uh, probably the biggest were to lose my dad and a really close friend who was about my age to cancer two and three years ago. And I had to learn how to look after myself during really difficult times, but also to appreciate this amazing life that we have. And so I, I love sharing all the things that I've learned. I'm always sharing links and you know um, podcasts and things with people. So that's why Sunshine and Glow is all about, it's that place where I share everything I'm still learning with anyone who wants to make positive changes. And it's whether it's a delicious recipe that's going to make you healthier, but in a way you know a beauty product that's going to enhance how amazing you already look or a podcast that's going to pick you up on a bad day you know um so that's um that's all that the website is about really yeah and i think it's interesting because i think that sort of um you know the the diversity of what you are creating um yeah it's all kind of centered around this positive kind of uh vibe is, yeah. is really what came through um and, the, and and i think hopefully now does come through in various elements of of the brand that we created especially i think you know we'll touch on a little bit later about the color was a big a big aspect of that um so the first step obviously that we went through with you just so kind of people can get a bit of an idea of, of how it works um was a questionnaire um and obviously your answers included you know things like about that you do write about things that bring you joy and that you can share that joy with other people and um, we asked you questions like if your brand walked into a room what would you want people to think of it um which was sincere and um how easy or hard did you find sort of this process um about thinking of the brand in in that way as in a kind of persona led way so some of the things were really surprisingly easy actually so the, the part about sincerity and being really authentic that came really naturally and that was something that I set out to do right from the beginning um, I never set off with the idea of creating something that was very aspirational and very unrealistic that was going to make people feel bad about their lives so that you know, we see so much out there that looks really beautiful and really curated and very edited. And I don't, to be honest, I don't have the skills to do that. So if I try to do that, it just looks really sloppy and awful. So I had to think about what my strength was and and what I could do, what I could offer. And so that was just that sort of spirit and what was a bit more sincere and more real. Yeah. And then other things that were a bit more difficult because I, I guess when I started I was doing this for me and so it's been a process that I think going through this creation of the brand persona has um, really helped me to detach myself a little bit from it and think about it as something that's not serving me and something that is serving others so what would an audience like to read? What would be useful to them? What might they be interested in? So this creation of the persona kind of helps you to think, all right, so what what do they want to do? Um, which didn't come that naturally at the beginning. Yeah. So that's yeah. probably the trickiest bit in that, <laughs> in that transition. And it's interesting because um yeah, I think that that happens a lot. It really does happen a lot, and um, that is a difficult thing um, for for brands to get their head around, especially you know, kind of small, smaller independent brands that it's not for you; it is for someone else. But I do think that it's equally important that that's sort of done with with balance, because at the end of the day, if you're not doing it for you a little bit, um, then you, you won't enjoy it anymore, you know, and so it's about kind of retaining that, you know, this is why I get up in the morning every morning and do it, um, but the content um, and how it's presented is in a way that, that would appeal um, to, to this customer or audience base that, that you want to help, essentially. Um, so, yeah, I think I think a lot of people um, 
find that little bit a little bit like oh it's a, it's a, it's almost like a little mindset shift um and once you get once you get the hang of it um, it just becomes second second nature really um so we also were curious to know um what's been the most useful fun or surprising aspect um of thinking about your brand uh, as a persona <laughs> Oh, well, there was something I loved, which was a question in the questionnaire that said, if your brand was a different character, what would it be? And I thought, how on earth am I going to answer this question? I didn't, it just, as soon as I saw it, I thought, all I could think of was all the Disney princesses. <laughs> I really don't relate to any of that. So actually, I had to go on Google. I <laughs> got to go. Disney characters, and then as soon as I saw the list, actually, there was one that really jumped out at me straight away, which was Alice in Wonderland. Um, and it's just, I'm such a curious person, and and so much of what Sunshine and Glow is about is about exploring whether it's you know new foods, habits, books, experiences, places. It's all about you know just seeing what's new out there and being curious. And I think what's really important about curiosity and what's, which is what I associate with um, Alice in Wonderland is the freedom that it gives you. It's like you're not committed to be amazing at anything. So you're really curious people that are hardly ever scared of failure. So, um, and I just really, really love it. And so many times we tell ourselves, well, oh, I could do that, but what if it doesn't work? And I always think, well, what if it does, you know? And if you go into things with that curious mindset, it's so, so freeing. So that was amazing. The, how, something that I thought, that question I thought, <laughs> there we go, answer it. <laughs> and I could think about Bella from Beauty in the Face. <laughs> I don't relate to any of these. And then suddenly that one jumped up and yeah. it was just so right. And I think about Alice a lot, actually, when I'm thinking about the kind of content that I want to create. So I think, what would Alice say? And what would she like? And what would she do? So it's been super, super helpful and actually really, really good fun. And and that's kind of, I mean, that's an added bonus, I think, really, because, um, yeah, to sort of learn that, not only is that a useful way of thinking um, for, for us to create the brand, um, but also, you know, the fact that it has been really useful that you can, when you're creating content for the yeah. brand, you can also kind of sit down with that Alice hat on and yeah. be like, okay, and and that, you know, it, it's, a, it's a fun question, but it's actually probably, for, for me, one of the most important questions that we ask. And I think all design studios maybe have a slightly different approach to that like I know some some studios will be um they'll maybe ask uh something like if your brand was a planet and they'll, yeah. and they'll get people to maybe like describe all of the way the signage might look what types of shops might be but that though that and the Disney question um essentially are doing the same thing because they're very kind of typical personas um, and typical answers that are associated with certain genres and then those genres tend to be associated with key design features so whether it's um, a particular sort of type of color scheme a uh, particular font for example um, or particular icons and the way that things are, are laid out so by getting that kind of one little persona you then make all these other associations and and bring them to, together in a way that um, communicates that persona and that persona is based on on the brand value really and who you want to be um to your customers so it's it's fantastic tool for creativity you know visual wise and it's brilliant to sort of learn that it's been good for your creativity in terms yeah. of creating content as well um because yeah it's a funny one sometimes when that questionnaire goes out people just go what <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't think that i just thought how am I going to answer this? I don't know if I'm really that into Disney. I don't know if I should say that. <laughs> How do I do this? But then, and another thing that I found really helpful about not just that side, but the um, that particular side about the character, but the persona is that I one thing I used to really struggle with was to put myself out there and to tell people about Sunshine and Glow. Yeah. I used to be so quiet about it because when it's yours and it's your baby and quite often when you are blogging, 
it is quite personal and it's just you and especially if you work full time um, and it's a hobby um, or something you do in your spare time it's quite personal and you feel that you're more scared of putting the word out there you think that you're self-promoting and the minute that you create this persona it's actually you're detached from it and so you, you go into work mode and you think yes I do need to get this, the word out there and I need to tell people about it and I need to take this seriously and I need to create the best content I can because I've a, you know a responsibility and it's really for, for me it's really helped me to focus in in that way as well yeah that's really good I'm, I'm very pleased about that and it and I think it does you know it's like you said it, it's kind of like you can comp compartmentalize it a little bit um so yeah that's very good um mm -hmm. and the final question really we wanted to ask it was if uh, there was a specific feature um that you liked most uh about the brand that we created um yeah if there was anything specific you, you enjoyed the best mm, yeah apart from alice obviously <laughs> <laughs> so i really loved the work we did finding a color palette um that tied it all together uh we had a conversation about um well, I just thought, I, I love colours, she says, <laughs> sitting in a white room. <laughs> but honestly, I do love bright colours, and my home is full of them. I'm always drawn to them, and I think they just, um, when I feel a bit low, I do wear something bright um, to cheer me up, and, and so it's just so important to me. And... I think they just transmit feelings and we chose colours that were very, we chose sky blue, or very sunny yellow, um, we chose that emerald green that's very vibrant and also that coral and those four colours, it's really helped me to tie everything together and, and use it to, you know, look at photography um, that has those colours and makes it all look really um i don't want to say uniform uniform is not the word consistent yes yeah. yeah so i used to um really beat myself up about how crap my photography <laughs> skills were i've got an eye for things and i can see when an image is good and i can put things together but I don't have the equipment or the lighting and so on to create photographs that or the backgrounds that make it um make it look really polished so actually having those four colors it's really helped me to when i'm looking at some free stock photography for example just look for those and look for a photograph where that color comes through and so it's really really helps it's given me loads of freedom we talked about using some of them as backgrounds as well for photography so actually that color palette it's been an amazing tool, um, really, really useful, and it's something that it helps me put something out there that looks good and that is right, and also it's got the added value because all the brands are all about being very positive and joyful and curious. Um, bright colours are quite, you know, they sit right with that. So yeah, that's one of my favourite things actually. I think I think what was really good as well about the the color aspect of it was that sort of right from the start by us being able to kind of have those conversations and ask all those questions about what the end goal was going to be um you know and and you kind of sharing with us um your plans for content marketing as well and how you were going to divide that up so that it was manageable for you um by us kind of being in the know about what, what all your plans were, we were yeah. able to work the colour scheme into that a little bit as well, aren't we? So that, you know, you've got, you're going to have sections for your content and each one of those relates to a certain brand colour. And I think that's really important part of the branding process um, is that it might not seem uh you know, oh, this is something that's about brand. Um, but the more kind of uh, a client can tell a designer about what they want to achieve and, and what their business plans are, really, then the more you end up with um, a really kind of um, tight set of tools that can then apply to all aspects of, of the business. And um, that that works really well, I think, with, with the colours. Um, and I'm really excited. One of the things, you know, 
even the name of it, it's sunshine and glowing. You've got the sky blue from the sky and you've got the sunny yellow. So even that reflects the name of the brand. So yeah. it was just, um, I couldn't be happier, honestly. Good, so good stuff. <laughs> Me too. I'm very excited to see it all um, launch on, on your website very soon. So that'll be coming soon. Um, so yeah, just to kind of uh, close up, and I hope this has been quite useful for people who are kind of entering the realms of maybe trying to create their own brand and brand persona um, and just explain the process a little bit. Um, but we'd really like to close up with an opportunity, obviously, for you to let us know um, what's happening for Sunshine and Glow over the next coming weeks and months and um, so yeah go for it <laughs> well uh, well as I said last summer I decided to take a break and really focus on regrouping and creating something new so after lots of late nights <laughs> lots of work <laughs> trying to learn to move um, a vlog from one platform to another one um, finally finally launching on Tuesday the 1st of November which actually is really exciting because November is my birthday month so it's a oh, month good super special for me so it's going to have a complete new look um, and lots of exciting new content which I'm super excited about. Um, I've never posted about blogging per se and, and that kind of thing but it's been such an interesting process to have to think about everything that I thought I really wanted to share some of the lessons that I've learned from you know from what tools I found useful, what questions to ask yourself, how to end up with good photography if you don't have the money to spend on uh, really expensive kits, some tricks and, and tips and I'll do I'll be doing a series of that. Um, and then I've also decided to share some inspirational quotes every Tuesday on social media. So, um, <laughs> Watch out for those and make sure you follow me <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter. And um, I think just I've got a couple of collaborations coming up that are really exciting. And I think that, again, is something that um, just building this persona has helped me uh, with, as I said earlier, just to reach out to people and, and try to collaborate. And I want to make this much more collaborative space uh, for people. So, yeah, it's all very um, – I'm still, like, working – um, into the night every day. <laughs> <laughs> but you're enjoying it. <laughs> yes. I, you know, every time I look at it, I just, it just feels really, really right. So, yeah. Um, just go on the website, um, which is sunshineandglow.com. It's very simple and easy to remember. And you find that everything you need. Brilliant. Okay. And um, obviously, you know, you can follow Inma's um, Tuesday quotes. Uh, I think it's just at Sunshine and Glow, isn't yeah. it, on Twitter yeah. as well. Um, so that's fantastic. Thank you so much for doing that, Inma. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, hopefully it'll it'll help other people with their brand. Um, and obviously, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments and we will get back to you. All right, then.